All right, so now we're going to cover sector area and arc length. These are both part of the objective 11.3, sector area and arc length. We're going to discuss arc length today, um, and then the next time we'll get to sector area. So when you're talking about arc length, what we're thinking about is the outside or the edge of the circle. Um, Remember that the circumference is 2 pi r. Um, you also want to remember that, um, so here's the circumference, 2 pi r. You also want to remember that the diameter is 2 r. All right, so it takes 2 of the radius added together to equal the diameter. And these are also plane units. That just means you're not going to um, see some sort of measurement with it. Um, an arc length is really just a fraction of the circle's circumference. So a lot of the times when we talk about circles, we think about pizza. So the arc length is actually just the pizza crust. It's just that little part on the outside of the circle. And the formula that we're going to use for um, arc length is 2 pi r, and then we're going to have our angle divided by 360. And that should make sense because here's the whole circle. It's 360 degrees. And if we're looking at just this piece right here, well, that piece is going to be associated with that angle. So we're just looking at that small piece to figure out the arc length. So here's what we do. We need a couple of things. First, in our formula, we use theta. So our formula is 2 pi r, where r is the radius, the angle, which is theta, 360 degrees. So we have to know theta, and we have to know r. Everything else, we have a button we can push. So when I look at my picture here, what is this telling me? Find each arc length. Give answers in terms of pi and round it to the nearest hundredth. So it wants the measure of f g. So I'm looking for this arc length, all right? It tells me that the angle is 134 degrees, all right? So that's like from here to here, all right? So this is where the theta is. Remember, if it's a central angle, that angle and that arc is going to have the same measure there. Um, that 134 degrees is how much that arc is bending. It's not, it was never how long it is. It was all about how much it was bending. So 8 centimeters is my radius. Even though it's over here on this other side, it's still the radius because it's from the center. So I've got all the information I need. 2 pi r is 8. 134 over 360. All right. So in my handy dandy calculator, I'm going to say, so it wants it in terms of pi. So that means we type all of the buttons in except for the pi, so we're going to leave the pi out the first time. And then another parenthesis, 134, 360. And then let's go over here, and I don't want that there. So once I kind of get this set up, I'm just going to leave it like this over and over. I want it to be in a fraction. All right, so my fraction, might need an actual pencil here, is 268 over 45, and then you've got to put pi. 
okay? So when it says leave it as a, in terms of pi, then you gotta write it as a fraction. Or you can go in here and you hit that pi symbol and you get this decimal, 18.71. It wanted it to the nearest hundredth. So it's really not hard. You just gotta plug all the pieces in. Here's another example. Find each arc length, give answers in terms of pi, and round it to the nearest hundredth. So an arc with measure 62 and a circle with radius 2 meters. So I need theta, which is 62. I need the radius, which is 2. My formula, 2 pi r theta 360. So 2 pi r is 2. The measure of the angle is 62. That's theta. And then 360 at the bottom. Going back to my calculator, I'm going to take out the pi. I'm going to change the 8 to a 2. And the 134 becomes a 62. So my answer is going to be 31 over 45. Now remember, i got to write the pi here. And let me clean this up a little bit. So 31 pi over 45 is what I'm going to write. Or you can write it 31 over 45 and just have the pi out there. Now, I also want to round include it, so I'm going to put the pi back in, and I'm going to get a decimal, or 2.16. Okay. Another example. Um, 6 is my radius, and then this angle right here, this theta, is 40 degrees. Theta is 40, radius is 6, 2 pi, 6, didn't mean to write an equals, 40 over 360. So I did not rewrite my formula because my formula was up here. So now I'm going back to my calculator. I'm going to take out the pi, I'm going to change that 2 to a 6, change 62 to a 40. 4 thirds pi, that sure is a prettier number than what I've been seeing. Or if I put the pi back in, I get 4.19. Okay, one more example. An arc with measure 135 and a circle with radius 4. So theta is 135, the radius is 4. Um, let's actually change this problem, all right? Let's change this problem a little bit because I haven't done one like this, and I'm pretty sure you're going to have one. Let's say... Diameter, mm, uh, let's not use 8. Let's say diameter 10. So that means that here's my circle. Here's my center. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Circle. Diameter. And... And 35 is probably like this. So this is 135. Oh, let's 
not what I wanted to do. I want this right here. I'm trying to find this arc length here. Now, when it tells you that the diameter is 10, you've got to know that the diameter is 2R. So that would be 10 equals 2R divide by 2, and the radius will be 5. So in a problem where they give you the diameter, you have to solve for the radius. Okay, now once I have the radius, my formula says 2 pi r, the angle divided by 360. So 2 pi r is 5, 135 over 360. Go to the calculator, take out the pi, change 40 to 135, and the 6 will become a 5. I'm getting 15 over 4 pi. Now I want to write it as a hundredth. I put the pi back in, and I get 11.78. All right, so that's going to stop with our examples for today.